Hey, what's up? Let me teach you about null safety. So if you clicked on this video, then you would know what a normal variable is, right? So variables by default are non-nullable, meaning it cannot be null. So in other words, it must have a value. So let's say like integer x, then you can see it's got a red squiggle there because it says here, the non-nullable variable x must be initialized. So that's just saying we need to give it a value. Right, so this is how normal variables behave. Now I'm gonna show you about this question mark. So if you put a question mark after a variable, it means it can be null. So for example, if I say integer with a question mark and I say y, then unlike before, this one doesn't have a red squiggle. And in my main function, if I just sort of print out what y is, then you can see it just has the value of null. And just to be clear, when an integer is null, that's different from the integer having a value of zero right? Null meaning it doesn't have a value at all. But of course, you can also give it a value if you like. It's just saying it can be any integer, but it can also be null. And then you have this double question mark. And what that does is it provides a fallback value in case the variable is null. So for example, let's say I'm going to have a string that can be null. And let's say we want to get a name from the database. And this happens sometimes. So if you get a name or a value from the database and maybe that doesn't exist, then it will return null. And that might cause errors in your app. So for this string, let's say it can be null, right? So if I just print this, you can see it's got a null value. And then let's say I'm gonna have a string. Now I wanna actually display this name in my app, right? So let's say we're going to give it this name from the database, but you can see it's got a red squiggle because it could potentially be null. And so in this case, if I say double question mark, what this is saying is if the name from the database happens to be null, then let's just give it no name. So if I print out name in app, you can see it says no name because the name from the database is null. So this is the general idea of null safety so that our app doesn't crash. Now, again, like I said, of course, this name from the database, most of the time we should have a value, right? So like if I say it's got a value of Mitch, then that value is what we're going to give to our name in the app. Awesome. Now, the next couple of things I want to teach you is this exclamation mark. So if you have an exclamation mark after a variable, it means that you are certain that this variable is not null. And so let me show you what I mean. Going back to our name from the database, let's say we have the value Mitch and I want to print out the name from the database and then if you hit dot, we can access a lot of these different methods, right? So a very common one is going to be length, right? Let's print the length of this name. Now you can see it's got a red squiggle again because it says here, the property length can't be unconditionally accessed because the receiver can be null. So try making the access conditional using either this question mark thingy or an exclamation mark, right? So what this is saying is because our name from the database potentially could be null, it's not gonna have a length at all, right? So that's why we have this red squiggle. But if you know that it's definitely gonna have a value, like in our situation here, we know we're gonna give it Mitch. And so you can put an exclamation mark to sort of let the system know that 100% this is not gonna be null so that we don't have any errors. Right, so if I print this, then you can see the length of Mitch is going to be five characters. Going back to this error, you can see we just did the exclamation mark, but then you also have this other way of doing it, which is this question mark with a dot. So with this one, it's called a null aware operator. And what this means is you can use it to access a property or a method. So kind of like this length that we had earlier of an object. And a couple of things to understand about this. So if the object before this null aware operator is not null, it's just gonna return like normal. But if the object before this null operator is, is null, then it will just return null. So let's try this out. So this name from the database, you can see the type, it potentially could be a null. So if I give it a question mark before this dot, then the error goes away and everything will just work fine. And so if we get rid of Mitch and there isn't a value here, so it's null, it will still work fine. And then it will just print out null as opposed to having an error. Now, again, I'm just going to explain this here. So without the null aware operator, 
you will get errors for using properties and methods like this length on null values. So simply, in other words, this null aware operator helps you gracefully handle null values without your app crashing, which is really helpful. Now, a couple of things to understand that I feel like is useful to know, which is before null safety was a thing, we had to do a lot of manual checks, something like this. If the name from the database is not null, then we can do stuff like we can do save code in here since we manually checked to make sure it's not null. So we used to have to do these sort of checks all the time just to make sure everything's all good. But now we can just use these little null safety features to make our code much more easier and cleaner to read. Awesome, now the question is, when do I use the question mark version versus the exclamation mark version? So I'm gonna just show you the advantages of each of them. So starting with the null aware operator, the advantages of this, the first advantage is just safety. Right, so using this null aware operator is safe when dealing with nullable objects. So if the object happens to be null, the expression will just gracefully return null without throwing any exceptions or any errors in your code. Right, so going back to our name from the database. So currently we didn't give it a value. So this name from database is null, as you can see. And so if I were to use this exclamation mark version, let's see what happens. Right, so remember this exclamation mark is us telling the system for sure that this name from database has a value. Right, so just to show you, like if I say again, it's got a value of Mitch, so we know for sure that it's not null. Then if I just restart this, then everything is fine. But if we get rid of this and it actually is null, but then in our code, we're telling it with this exclamation mark that it for sure has a value then that's a mismatch and basically we're wrong. And so if you run this, then you're gonna get this error. It's saying null check operator used on a null value, meaning it's null, but we're telling it it's definitely not null. So you'll get this error, right? So that's the advantage of using this question mark version. It's just much safer to use and it will just gracefully handle it without throwing these errors. The other advantage is just having cleaner code in general. So you can simplify conditional checks. So remember I showed you before null safety, you had to do these manual checks, right? So instead of using a longer condition, like for example, like let's say we have a student and we would have to check, make sure it's not null, right? Make sure there actually is a student. And then if there is a student, then let's return that student's name. Otherwise we're gonna return null. So this kind of longer condition is something we don't have to do anymore. You can just say student question mark dot name. So in this case, ultimately what we just want is the student's name, right? But because it could potentially be null and we're gonna have some errors, that's when this question mark is really handy. And so that makes our code much cleaner. Well, if that's the case, then when would you ever use the exclamation mark? So the advantage of this exclamation mark version is explicitness. And what I mean is by using the exclamation mark after a variable, you're explicitly stating that you expect the value to be non-null, like it has a value. But let's say it doesn't go according to our expectation. And if it does end up being null, then the code will throw an error, which you saw earlier. And that's actually sometimes useful because that can actually make debugging straightforward since the error will point directly to the line that has that error. Whereas the previous one, the question mark version, it's not gonna show you any error, it's just gonna handle it for us. And so your code will be handled you know, gracefully and so you won't even know really where the null happened. So these are the advantages of using these two different checks. If you have any questions so far, just let me know below. But this was just the theoretical understanding. But just to make our understanding more concrete, let's use a practical example, which I always find helpful. So imagine a school where students take an exam. Right, let's say the exam is out of 15 marks. And at the end of the year, the school wants to print out the marks of every student. However, not all students took the exam. Okay, so if I just create a quick student class here, let's say every student needs a name. So I'm gonna require this when we create a student. And let's also create an integer for a score. But for this one, I'm gonna put a question mark here because it potentially could be null. 
and so I'm not going to require it. Right, why would that be the case? Well, maybe the student was absent and didn't even take the test. And then at the end of the year, the school wants to print out the mark of every student. So let's just create a list of students here. Let's say I'm going to create my first student called Mitch and let's give him a score of 7. Let's create another student called Sarah and this Sarah person is absent so I'm not going to give, him, not going to give her a score. And let's just create some more students here. So you've got John, you've got Lucy, and then Ben with a score of zero. And then another person, Jaden, who was also absent. So the key idea you need to understand about why null is a thing is null is different from a score of zero. Like you can have a student that did take the test, but he just got everything wrong and got a score of zero. That's different from someone who was absent and didn't take the test. You understand? Right, so this is the list of all of the students that we have. And then let's try to print out the student's marks. Now to do this, I'm just going to create a method real quick to convert a score into a percentage. So let's just create a quick method here where we are going to accept a score as an integer, but this score could potentially be null because the student could have been absent. And let's say the total number of marks is 15. And to do some math calculation on this, we're going to need a double. Let's say double percentage. So let's convert this score to a double since the score is an integer. And let's multiply by 100 and divide it by the total number of marks. So this is how obviously you would make something into a percentage. But you can see there's a squiggle here because it says here that the receiver could be null. So let's put our question mark, our null aware operator here. And it looks like we still have an error. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use our double question mark. Right, so remember this means if our left hand side happens to be null, then let's just return zero so that our calculation can move forward. Awesome, and then let's finally, let's try to return this as a percentage, as a string. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just check this score that we are given. Is it null? If it's null, then let's say absent. Otherwise, let's return that percentage. Now I want to return the percentage to string as fixed and this one just means how many decimal points. So let's just say zero decimal points. I just want a whole number. And maybe let's attach a percent sign on here as well. Awesome, now let's come back to our main function and let's try to print out the student's marks. So let's do a for loop and go through each student in the list of students. And we're going to print the student's name. So let's say the student's name's mark and then get that score as a percentage. And we can change this to interpolation if you like to view it like that better. But let's have a look. I'm going to save this and then rerun this. So we had these scores that we gave them and some of the students were absent. So Mitch's mark is 47%. Sarah's mark, well, she was absent. And then we have all these different percentages. Now the key thing again, like I said, what I want you to understand is having a score of zero is different from not having a score, right? So if you don't have a score, then that's equivalent to being null. And so these kind of situations happen a lot, like we saw in this particular example, where some variables could be null. And so all these little question marks and exclamation marks, all of this stuff is to help us with our null safety so that our code doesn't crash. Now, I tried my best to explain null safety as simply as I can. So I want you to have a think about this and if you have any questions on anything we looked at today, I want you to comment below so I can try to help you out. But I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.